Thanks for watching this portion of Garage Logic on our YouTube channel. And thanks to our friends at Everest Men's Health for supporting this. Go to EverestMensHealth.com to see if their team can help you with stronger energy and better health. And catch the Garage Logic podcast wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Correction segment. Correction segment. Scott writes, Joe, you're killing me. It's Eota, not. Nope. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's Eota, not Iota. I've lived in Winona County for decades. Not until I heard your show have I ever heard Iota pronounced, or rather mispronounced, as Eota. You're welcome. Thank you, Scott. And you know I what? Tried, oh, go ahead. Kenny. I tried to go that route yesterday, but then you all agreed on Iota, so I shut up because I didn't want to well, be the one that was wrong. And as a guy that grew up in Rice County in southern Minnesota, I should have stuck to my guns. I knew it was pronounced Iota. But I listen to you guys. Iota. Wait, no, a Iota. Iota. You like said Iota. It's Iota. Iota. That's what I said. Well, wait a minute. No, it's back, Iota. Iota. Back the tape up. Iota. What the hell? Iota. 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 It's uh, pronounced A Iota. 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 Hey, you going down there to Iota? Yep. Todd writes, Joe. Before I begin, I want to provide some input on something that's been driving me crazy. Those of us in southeastern Minnesota pronounce pronounce Iota as Iota. Feel free to drag out the O in good Minnesota fashion. Iota. Oda. Oh, sure. I think I think we need to go to the king of pronunciations, Ricey. Oh, yeah. He will know. On to, the, all, um. on to the reason for my email. Opportunity has me moving from southern Minnesota this, to the central Iowa district of Gumption County. I'm uh, working and will eventually be settling into a nice town of about 7,500 people. Tonight was the parade that started the run of the county fair. This parade was pure Americana. It was a typically sultry July evening in Iowa. The parade had the flag at the front as it should be, followed by the LEOs and other emergency service folks. I might note our float being close to the front allowed me to hear the cheers, no booze, as the flag and LEOs passed. There were tiny and teen princesses all in classic convertibles, even a few garbage and dump trucks having good fun with their air horns. The crowd was far more diverse than one might have expected, but guess what? Nobody cared. It was one big happy crowd of fun. Here's the ray of hope. My role for my employer's float was to walk along the route and hand out trinkets. To my great surprise and pleasure, all children, no matter the age, said thank you. I would say 80% did so without parental prompting. Manners still do exist. Tonight reminded me America is still an awesome country, especially if you can get away from the tall buildings. Good luck, Todd, from Kenyon for now. Isn't it something when you have to be aware of the fact that kids said thank you? Get, get out of my head, because you know what I was just about to say? <laughs> and, and I was glad that this parent said this to me over the weekend. My, my son had a baseball tournament, and, you know, there's a lot of snacks and waters and everyone's sharing stuff. And... I, a parent came up to me and she said, you know, you're the, your son is the only one that says thank you every single time someone does something for him. That's really cool. And I thought that should be the way with every kid. Mm -hmm. Well, that's but, because you beat him, right? You absolutely. Him with a, with a belt. Big old whip. Wooden mm -hmm. spoon or something. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, he is a good kid. But seriously, it, it's a lost art, Joe. There's not enough kids that do say please and thank you like they used to. Oh, I know. It's, 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 it's ridiculous. Remember how I've predicted that there'll come a time when we're not going to be allowed to talk to each other? No, don't tell me it's already here. Just stay tuned. It'll be coming up later. Oh, good. Yeah. I was in a good mood. Remember Don wrote yesterday from Iowa. Uh, he was uh, admonishing Kenny uh, for believing that uh, uh, constituents shouldn't expect favors from their representatives. And we were puzzled. Well, he's responded. Joe and Kenny, thank you for hearing out my perspective yesterday, but at the very least, I owe Kenny a clarification and potentially an apology. When I hear Kenny referencing handing out favors, I infer that he's talking about the lowering of standards or handing out money for little to no effort, like the Agape group. I believe oh. I I believe I know I but I believe I now better understand what Kenny means when he says favor. Providing good government, which includes uh, passing reasonable laws and providing enforcement of those laws. If that's the case, I fully apologize for the misunderstanding. I cannot apologize re for referring to Mr. Olson as a hick, especially in, <laughs> especially in light of the Arby's cheese in the beard story. Good luck, Don Hyde. Yeah. <laughs> he nailed right. that one. Yeah, he did. That's right. That's right. Uh, have you watched the reaction to the Bezos uh, spaceflight? 
somewhat. Well, Democrats are the ones up in arms. Well, it's, oh. it's the money thing, right? right? Isn't it? Yeah. We want your money. We don't want you spending your money to fly to space. Right. We want your Even money. though it's your money. Right. No, pay your taxes. Well, he does pay taxes, it's, but it's you get that much money. It's complicated. And, and you Democrats in the uh, House and Senate in Washington, you've written the tax laws. So who are you mad at? Fix them. You wrote the tax legislation that now require accountants and attorneys to have libraries full of books. And you think Bezos isn't going to take advantage of that? Dig into one more book there, Barrister. You can find something that'll get me off the hook here. But you legislators, you wrote these laws. You're responsible for the tax laws. We don't write them. So that's my little soliloquy on that. But I, you know, we got a, we got a listener. They were in Woodbury uh, uh, and they've moved to Texas. And he's the guy who had the eight-year-old kid that could that was almost uh, prophetic in what he was knew what was coming up on Garage That's Logic, right. and he'd yes. give the old man the high five and whatever. And it's Joel Rothbauer, the father, and he said the eight year old and I were listening to you talk about the new space race. I have to agree with your take that this is a new era, and it is inspiring. The eight year old loved to track the progress of the companies and watch as they test new systems, roll out new rockets, etc. The transparency they have is nothing short of historic. They stream everything they do, successes and failures. One thing you mentioned was that they should be required to use electric motors instead of petroleum products. I don't think they should be required to. I was predicting they'll get heat to, since they uh, seem to want to push electric vehicles on the rest of us. SpaceX is developing a new rocket system in South Texas they call Starship. The fuel it uses is liquid methane and liquid oxygen. They are building a production facility that will use solar power to pull carbon dioxide and oxygen out of the air. Again, using solar power, they will use these components to make methane and then supercool it to make the fuel. It's a crazy GL-like operation they are running. It's like a huge tinkering garage where they are uh, iterating through prototype after prototype, flying, crashing, blowing up, learning, and building the next one a little oh. better. In only a little over a year, they have gone from testing engines to a full-on orbital flight in the next month or so with as environmentally friendly rocket fuel as you can get. Every wow. bit of carbon that goes into the atmosphere will be coming out of the atmosphere. The plan is to send these rockets to Mars where the right components exist in the atmosphere so that they can produce fuel in the same way and send the rockets back. Hmm. So these rockets are more than just a joyride. By the way, the eight-year-old took issue with the guys putting Elon... Is it Elon Musk? Elon. Elon Musk Elon. in the same boat as Bezos and Branson. His take is that those two are playing with really cool toys. SpaceX is doing work. His take and mine as well. They employ tens of thousands, though. So build your own toys for all I care. They are really cool toys, and I want one. Joe in Little Elm, Texas. And it was nice of Joe to also supply um, video of the launch of that particular ship. Oh, yeah. That was uh, taking flight due to methane. Right. There See? it goes. Yep. It's there it off. goes. Hold on. Oh, now it's really up there. I have my binoculars trained. Hold on. One more. This is the separation of the capsule. There it goes. There it goes. Yeah. <laughs> I, could, I couldn't help myself. And Carl Bear in Northfield writes, Hail the Flashlight King. Hail you. you. I will offer you another viewpoint of the Bezos Musk Branson space race. My oldest friend was a NASA astronaut but is now semi retired. We were roommates during Navy flight training back in the 1970s. Later, we roomed together on board the USS Forrestal while flying attack jets, the A 6 intruder, during cruises in the Mediterranean wow. Sea. Wow. I went on to become an airline pilot, but he continued his career as a test pilot, NASA astronaut, and later as a consultant to the space industry. Because I don't want to offend him or put words in his mouth, I won't reveal his name, but he is a real person and very much a garage logician. Anyway, we are in daily communication about many subjects, but currently about the ongoing billionaires in space saga. My friend views the whole thing with benign amusement. I asked him if he would like to test out the Blue Origin spacecraft, but he declined that idea, saying it's not very robust. He means the Shepard craft might be good enough for tourists to ride along, 
but not really much good for actual space exploration. He also thinks the Branson craft is much more authentic because it requires skilled pilots to actually fly and land the thing. Don't know much about the Elon, Elon Muskrat project. I agree with Kenny's comment that it's a billionaire's money and they can spend it however they want, but they don't get to lecture me about green energy or saving the earth. And one small correction, the Bezos rocket was powered by liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, not fossil fuels. All right. The I Grumman A6 Intruder is an American twin jet all-weather attack aircraft developed and manufactured by Grumman Aircraft, or excuse me, Grumman Aerospace, operated by the Navy, a two-seater. Pretty cool looking plane. Mm -hmm. I still think that 10 years from now, 20 years from now, uh, there will be significant space traffic with tourists. Think so. Now yeah, going up to a wedding or going to stay up at a hotel or go up so, to uh, go to the weightless room for fun or whatever. I, I, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about because I'm still reading this uh, Wikipedia page also used by the Marine Corps. Did that emailer say he this thing was based off carriers? So he's he's landed these things on carriers. Yeah, USS Forrestal. Oh, he's got a wheelbarrow that he totes mm -hmm. him around in, mm -hmm. doesn't he? Mm -hmm. That is badass. Cool. That's the kind of guy you want on your commercial flight. Right. Yep. Yes. Yep. I'm right behind him. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> no, I think that uh, I think we're seeing the beginning of. So uh, what you're suggesting is you think Bezos, Elon, Bezos, Iota, Bezos. Iota Musk. Uh, they're going to go up to Mars and build a, you know, almost like a resort. Well, I read today that Bezos wants to colonize space. You know, you well, can correct me if I'm wrong. He's, they're all using their own money, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. What's wrong with that? Well, the Democrats are saying we want that money it would be better spent here on Earth. To... There's oh, because they can be spend a... it really well right they're, now. They're much smarter than Bezos and sure. Branson and sure. Musk. A uh, young gal on... Uh... The radio station I'm intimately familiar with, who uh, was overheard to uh, report yesterday that she's uh, that they should be more concerned with global warming instead of this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which, oh, when, um... which, when that was uh, reported to me, I had to turn off my mic because I was coughing and laughing so hard. Uh, we don't know that. <laughs> wow. Yeah. 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 I screwed yeah, up again. Yeah. I was given. Uh, I was given new Aquaside copy and. Didn't get to it. Hmm. I'll have to if you want to see the video, you make can sure go we do to that tomorrow. Yeah. 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 What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. I think that, uh, uh, as I said yesterday, it's, it's human nature uh, to press forward. It's human nature to explore. It's human nature to keep reaching out for new boundaries. For a lot of people. For a lot of Not people. Not for everybody. No. Uh, I, I have no personal interest in going into space. Neither do I. Uh, I just don't see... Why I would. I, I, I'm. You know what I want to do? And uh, I'm going to preface this by saying I am deathly afraid of flying. And even when I get on a big one, an A-10 or whatever the hell they're called, I, I've got I've, I've to be lubed up. <laughs> About a six-pack in you. These guys that fly these crop dusters, that has to be the funnest job in the whole wide world. Unless you crash it into a field in Elgin, Minnesota, and they just lost I, the... Uh, uh, there was one south of town yesterday, and I had to race down there to watch. They are banking hard. They're shooting straight up in the air. They're dropping under power lines where they probably shouldn't be, skirting the edges of woods. That looks like a just a blast. Mm -hmm. I was, That's got to be fun. I was coming home from Lamberton Father's Day weekend Saturday, late Saturday afternoon, Kenny, and this guy... I, I don't know what township it was, but it was so cool watching him maneuver that thing. It was an it was almost like he was a Zamboni driver. He knew exactly when to turn and what crease to make. It was so yeah, cool. But, I mean, foot to the floor, wide, oh yeah, over, oh yeah, just as fast as he possibly can, and banking hard. <laughs> Are you so aware cool of the loss see. of the helicopter? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, down yeah. Elgin. Yeah. But we were that having fun a, with this particular story. We didn't a, want to go. No, I, I know. I understand. Uh, I understand. Dr. Buzzkill, yeah. Uh, yeah. the party man. Yeah. 